coming to Alexandria Arnold, I was writer, executive producer, and I played Zoe for The Gates. The Gates was the very first uh, experience I had writing an entire script. I had written some flashback scenes in the past, um, and, you know, contributed into what Josh was writing, but it wasn't something that I had literally sat down and constructed myself from, you know, start to end. It was a soup to nuts thing. And I really, really love paranormal and supernatural horror. Uh, as much as, you know, stat movies is very much in the gory uh, section of horror, absolutely paranormal and supernatural is my favorite. I love a good possession movie, a good ghost movie. Those are my favorite. So Josh suggested that I write my own short film and that kind of terrified me, but I also realized that it was gonna give me the opportunity to find my own writing voice. I had contributed before, but never had an original idea for an entire short myself and, you know, constructed the actual script for it. So as scary as it was, I drew upon the fact uh, that I love Supernatural, and I knew that I could kind of do whatever I wanted to for this one. I'm Joshua Patrick Dudley, and I am the director of The Gates. Taking credit for anything on The Gates feels a little weird, because it really was all Rachel's brainchild. I wanted to give Rachel the chance to do something where she was finally fully in control, and also to give her the experience of what I go through on all the different productions. <laughs> So it was really neat to see what she came up with. Rachel is a huge fan of ghost movies and um, it took me a little while to come around to them. I've always been more of a slasher movie fan myself. So having Rachel throw around all these ideas for a ghost movie got me excited too. And I'm like, you know what? We're gonna do short movies. If you wanna write it, we can do it. So that's what happened. She wrote it and like I said, I'm credited as a director, but I really think I should give the directing credit to Rachel. I was mostly there pointing the camera. I was a glorified cameraman, I think. <laughs> so I kind of based it on my experience. In late 2000s, I was actually a paranormal researcher and I took everybody that was on my team that I ran to this cemetery in Nashua, New Hampshire and trained everybody. It was small and in a main area and we had gained permission to be there. So I figured why not kind of translate that. So I created a story where a bunch of friends who hadn't seen each other for a while gathered together to do, you know, one more investigation. And so they're checking out the cemetery they've always wanted to check out. And you notice as you're going through everything, you know, past the education <laughs> that Shayna had to read, her poor soul, um, through to actually being in the cemetery and investigating, you start to notice that things aren't quite right. And I had hoped that you wouldn't have put your finger on exactly what wasn't right. I did use some local folklore and I talked about the Gilson family. Anyone who's you know into ghosts in New Hampshire probably has heard about um, Gilson Road Cemetery. Sometimes people call it Blood Cemetery in Error. That's actually a separate one but you'll hear people talk about it and how there's this story about a woman who loses several children when they're very, very young. And so if you go into the cemetery, it actually meets, matches up with that because there are three little headstones for Gilsons. And in that time period, traditionally, that's how you marked when a child died who was very, very young. Um, so we created this whole story and you start to realize that Stephanie's character has maybe become possessed. Hi, I'm Stephanie Mayhew, and I play Willow in The Gates. The Gates is a very different production because Rachel actually wrote it. She was a big part of the directing as well. It's kind of hard to say that there's a big difference working with Rachel and Josh because Rachel and Josh are kind of like always united when it comes to everything. I'd say she had more say on how she wanted it to look, but she wasn't like this mega bitch and was like, this is my production and you can sit down. She's really open to hearing what Josh says, especially because Josh has so much input on everything with the horror and like just an angle or something. So it felt collaborative, if that makes sense. But I think that she did a great job doing it for the first time, you wouldn't have known that it was her first time. Rachel knew the story way better than I did. She knew the setup, 
like I, I did my research, I did my homework, she sent me the script and I even edited it for her. I went through and told her parts that I thought worked and parts that I didn't think worked and parts I thought she could expand on or make scarier or tone down, vice versa. 97% of the work on The Gates was done by Rachel. She knew this ghost story that was based on a real ghost story because Rachel ran a uh, paranormal investigation team. So we went out to an actual cemetery in New Hampshire that has a history where this real story was based and used that real story as a basis for a paranormal team investigating and kind of getting attacked. There's a scene in, in my car at the very end where I'm driving her away and I think I'm helping her because she's obviously had some sort of psychotic break or breakdown and I need to get her out of here. All of our friends have just died. We don't know how or why. And so we're taking her out and obviously I haven't put it together yet that she's actually the one taking people out. And so we have this really intense and scary conversation where I'm trying to get her to answer me and be normal and she's just off the rails and at the end she actually comes for me and that's sort of how my life ends in that film. But she was so terrifying even like before that when she was walking down the sidewalk and twitching and really the physicality of it was quite scary to watch because we filmed in the dark with our lovely lighting. I got to pick my dream cast and put that offer out to the actors and actresses we had worked with before that I really, really saw in these parts. Hey guys, my name is Shayna and I play Holly in the short film, The Gates. This is a lot of fun to do. I was definitely more of like the scared character in the group of us. Um, I had the longest monologue. <laughs> so it's kind of funny when you watch it too. Um, I don't know how many times we had to actually film it, but you can see like it might've been spliced in like the spots that were probably the best um, because I probably messed up quite a bit. And we did actually film at Gilson Cemetery. So that was kind of cool. Uh, something kind of fun about it. So as we were filming, there was actually like ghost hunters that, <laughs> that came and we were like, oh, what, what are you doing? And um, so they were actually looking for, you know, the temperature changes and whatnot. And we're like, oh, well, we're making a film about ghosts. So <laughs> it was kind of funny. And the anxiety of are they gonna accept it or be like, whatever, you know, I'm used to working on Josh's projects. I don't, you know, know what to expect with yours, so no. But everybody said yes, um, and so that was awesome. And it really felt like we were just filming with friends because these are the people who were like, die hard from the beginning, stab people that we loved working with and making an entire movie in a different genre of horror or subcategory of horror with them was a lot of fun. We were a paranormal group that were coming together for one last hurrah and um, to find Elizabeth Gilson. The filming was really cool. Um, we went to this like really old cemetery up in New Hampshire and we had to wait and there were other people that were actually there trying to catch something paranormal, I remember, because they had equipment and they kind of ran into us and we were trying, to, we were like, just, can we film this real quick here? Is that okay? And they were really cool about it. And then we ended up going across the road, I believe, to film the rest of it, which was a little hard because just, People's houses, noises, cars driving by, trying to get the right lighting. It was so dark, trying to see everybody and get them in the shots. So this being the first time that I have ever written an entire short film script myself, it was interesting because I, obviously being on camera, couldn't also direct the film. And so trying to learn to communicate what was playing in my head, the movie that was playing in my head so that it could be shot by Josh, who is not in my brain about this. It's not his subcategory that he's been working for so many years in, um, was very interesting. He doesn't give himself an, enough credit. He feels like he didn't know what he was doing and that he was a glorified cameraman. That wasn't the case. I thought he did wonderfully and it was interesting and kind of heartwarming to see that for so many years he would say something to me about a scene and I would film it and he'd be like, yep, you're in my head. This is the first time I wrote something and he filmed it and didn't feel sure about it, but he was in my head. So it was awesome. 
I actually love that movie. I think it came out really cool. The cast in it is really cool. Uh, it, it reunites a lot of people from different Stab movies, which is really cool. Like Shane is in it from Stab 4 and 5. Chris Doobie's in it from Stab 4 and 5. Jeff Davis from Stab 6 is in it. And uh, Stephanie Mayhew from Stab 5, Stab 6, Stab 7, you know, Shannon from the Stab series is in it. And Rachel, uh, and Rachel really got to um, pick her dream team. So that was all her too. Uh, the cast and everything. Like I said, I was a glorified cameraman. But I, I have to say I really had a fun time doing this character because I got to like play a little bit at, at being enveloped by a spirit. I really liked it. So I had to, I got to play with my voice a little bit, which was a little different. And you get to hear me scream, which I think I'm pretty good at. Josh added some little effects and put out a new version, it's a little up-to-date version of it, which I actually just watched with them and I thought it was pretty sick. If you haven't seen it, you guys should check it out. I had never obviously created my own film, but I knew what I liked watching the most. So being able to kind of guide Stephanie in her character development as far as, you know, when are you gonna giggle? When are you gonna scream? What's an appropriate scream? How should you be twitching? You know, how how do you make yourself creepy? And that's kind of a joke because uh, Steph herself as an actress kind of focuses on the dark and the twisted. So she was kind of already there and I'm sure that subconsciously that's why I you know, casted her in that role. It was really cool to be the one that kills this time, I have to say. Um, even though it wasn't technically me, it was Elizabeth Gilson, and it was really sad that, you know, she had three stillborn babies. Yeah, I can't handle that stuff. Um, but it was awesome to be able to say, this is how I want you to do it. Show somebody they get it once, um, and then watch everything that's in your brain come to life. It was a really neat experience. It was fun working with Rachel, and the whole car scene was pretty stellar, I thought. I remember messing around. That took a little bit of time to film, so we joked around during that. that. That was definitely a fun scene to do. And then my walk away scene, like I got to do some ticks and shit, some like body acting, which is always fun. Just get physical with it. I just remember laughing a lot. I remember sitting on a wall. We were on like this wall and we were just kind of joking around, having fun, kind of, getting our um, our energies right so we could play in this thing together. My name is Jeff Davis. I was also in the gates. I played Logan. We shot it in one night and zero budget and not a lot of fancy equipment. I just think Josh had his little handheld camera that he always had. The script was awesome. At that point in my life, I was really into Ghost Hunters, the TV show. So. Um, that was, I was like, yeah, we get to go kind of investigating, going, but it was awesome. But I remember the set was across the street from this beautiful neighborhood and all these nice houses, really, really expensive looking nice houses. So I just remember thinking like, okay, are we going to get like the cops called on us? I was this okay that we're here? Um, but it worked out. Everyone was really cool. Chris Doobie was on that production as well. This time he did not have to wear any of my clothes. So, you know, Chris. You really moved up in the world, man. Rachel had this smart car and I always wanted to drive a smart car. Always wanted to. And that's all I could think about all night when we were filming is like, I wonder if she'd let me drive it. I wonder if she'd let me drive it. I wonder if she'd let me drive it. Ah, just ask her. So I did, I asked her and she was like, oh yeah, no problem. So we're cruising around and she says, you can turn right in the middle of the road, you know? And I was like, what? <laughs> so I did, I turned, whoop, and went the other direction in a matter of seconds. It was awesome. Dream come true. Check that one off the list. When my head hit the tree, I was trying to come up with a, a, an organic sound as what I thought someone would make if their head bounced off a tree. So, but no matter what I did, it didn't matter. It, always, it all sounded like a 90s, you know, video game. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I just couldn't get it. I thought the, the finished product was awesome. You know, I thought the darkness, you know, not having all the lighting and all that stuff worked for it uh, because there was a lot you couldn't see. Well done, Rachel, well done. So I guess in retrospect, it was my first project. I haven't written an entire script since. So I think that 
ironically through this pandemic even though it's horrible what people are going through people are also getting a chance to get back to do the things they love they have the time to be with their families and work on projects that they like and i think that in the future you might see more rachel projects i thought it was a great short film i'm very interested to see what happened and where she is now and if she's still haunting